In terms of the transfer of charge inside a material, we can talk about two extreme cases, the conductors and insulators. So electrical conductors, those are materials that can conduct electricity, electron transfer is allowed, are metals, <coughs> and they have free electrons. For example, copper, aluminum, uh, silver, etc. So what happens in these materials is that the valence electrons uh, in these atoms will be detached from the atom uh, due to uh, thermal energy and they will be released to the uh, crystal lattice of these atoms and uh, will move freely around uh, in, inside the material. Now, when we talk about insulators, they have all of their electrons strongly bound to the atoms. For example, silicon dioxide, where we have a covalent bond between uh, silicon and oxygen atoms. These electrons are shared to form uh, the closed shell structure of each of the atoms. And these electrons are strongly bound, so they cannot be easily detached from the atoms and released to the lattice. Therefore, it's uh, very difficult to have a uh, conduction of electricity inside the insulator. Now, on the other hand, between these two extremes, we have semiconductors. They have electrical properties in between metals and insulators, for example, silicon and germanium. Uh, and uh, in these materials, due to thermal excitations, we have some of the electrons being detached from the atoms and some stay uh, bound to the uh, atoms. So we have uh, basically properties in between a free electron metal and an insulator. Now, how do we visualize a metal? So we can say that we have these immobile, positively charged cores. These are ions. So these are basically the atoms that have their uh, valence electrons detached and those valence electrons will be moving freely inside the material, so they will form a free electron C. So we have a combination of immobile ion cores, positively charged ion cores, uh, and uh, a free electron C. Uh, the, the free mobile electrons uh, are basically acting as the conduction electrons here, so they will be responsible for conducting electricity. Okay, so that's how we visualize the metal. Now, when we th think about electrification process, uh, in the case of induction, uh, we have an interesting situation when we bring a charged insulator near an electrically neutral insulator. So a charged rod actually attracts electrically neutral paper. So how can we explain this? Uh, because we normally expect that positive charges will, will be attracting negative charges, but the paper is electrically neutral. So even though the charges uh, in, do not move freely in insulators, the molecules can be locally polarized. So we have local motion of charge. So that's basically what's happening here. When we bring a charged balloon near a wall, uh, the electrons are not free to move inside the crystal, inside the material. But what we see is that the molecules close to the um, surface here will get polarized. So there will be an induced charge separation. So a negative, uh, there will be a negative charge, net charge developing uh, close to the surface, which is balanced by the positive charge um, away from the surface. So this is basically not due to the motion, free motion of electrons inside the material, but it's a local process. So there's a local uh, electrification process. Now the situation is a little bit different when we have an insulator and a conductor. So let's think about a conducting sphere. So here's our conducting sphere. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positive charges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative charges. Total charge is zero. This is an electrically neutral conducting sphere. It's a metal sphere. But from our picture of metals, we know that these electrons are free to move around, whereas these positively charged ion cores uh, are immobile. 
So what happens if we bring a charged rod nearby? So we will see that these free electrons will be repelled by the electrons, uh, by the ne negative charge on this rod, and they will move away from uh, the rod. So we will see collection, accumulation of electrons on the right hand side here. So this will be basically a polarization process. But if we follow this process by uh, connecting one side of this uh, sphere to the ground, so we, we form a path for the electrons to flow through, we will see that the electrons that have accumulated on the right hand side will start flowing towards this uh, ground reservoir. So. Uh, after this charge transfer process, if we break this connection, uh, we will see that we will have net uh, four electrons remaining inside and eight ion cores that are immobile remaining inside the conducting sphere. But uh, if we take this uh, charged rod away, we will see that these electrons, remaining electrons, will redistribute uh, to form a uniform picture. So there will be a uniform distribution of electrons. So what we will see here, uh, plus 8E for the charge of the ion cores and minus 4E for the charge of the remaining mobile electrons, we will have a net charge uh, plus 4E developing here. So basically in this process we have used first polarization uh, due to uh, an, the presence of a, a charged insulator in, in proximity and then we will have the transfer of electrons to the uh, ground reservoir which is followed by a redistribution of remaining mobile electrons uh, to form a conducting sphere with a net charge of plus 4e. So basically we have gone through the uh, process of induction. In the case of insulator insulator we have a local process. We have a local charge developing due to polarization of molecules. In the case of the insulator and conductor we have actual motion of free electrons uh, and that can be basically transferred to a ground reservoir to eventually form a charged uh, conductor. So basically we can explain the difference between the insulators and conductors uh, due to the picture of uh, having free electrons versus strongly bound electrons. So in the case of uh, metals we have the valence electrons that are released to the crystal uh, completely detached from the atoms and can mo freely move around. In the case of insulators these electrons uh, are not easily detached from the atoms so uh, the electrical conduction is poor. And uh, remember that semiconductors have properties in between them. So it's very important to have this picture in mind where we have immobile, positively charged ion cores uh, inside a free electron C in order to interpret the behavior of uh, metals uh, when we apply electric potentials, when we apply electric field, etc.